Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on how climate change is making hurricanes more dangerous. So I talked about um, I talked about this paper, this this um, news article that talked about n a number of the different ways that the hurricanes are becoming stronger. Some of them are becoming larger in size. They're intensifying much more quickly. So the pressure in the center of the, center of the hurricane is dropping more rapidly. The wind speeds are increasing. They're being a lot of them are moving slower, so they're causing tremendous amounts of damage in the regions that they hit. We've just had unprecedented behavior of Hurricane Dorian, which parked over the Grand uh, Bahama Islands and just sat there and turned away. And who knows what's going to be left on that island when all the da damage is looked at. And it really leads to the question of, of, you know, with utterly total and complete devastation, of this island, you know, rebuilding everything um, without, you know, cl you know, in the rec in the spots where they were, uh, you know, close to sea level, you know, not at high elevation, structures that would just be ripped and torn apart. I mean, how do we build to st against a Category Five hurricane? You need, uh, like, it's the qu it leads to the question of is you know how long do we keep rebuilding? You know, when, when do we start leaving areas uninhabited because climate change is just too devastating? And, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bankrupt us all to, you know, especially with sea level rise and, and cities around coastlines. Um, you know, we need to fight climate change. We need to treat it as a climate emergency that, that it really is. So this is going to be getting into the science papers um, so before I do that, I just want to give you um, your uh, Shackleton fix. This guy, you know, he seems, you know, can't sleep so many hours of the day, and I really don't want to disturb this guy because, uh, you know, he'll get annoyed at me. But there he is. There's uh, the Shackleton fix. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the uh, papers that... Um, are, are uh, mentioned so you can come across you can you can just google this article and click on any of the links okay and you can get access to the studies that i'm looking at but i'm just going to give you a flavor of them here without too much detail okay so and it's sort of in the order that they're um, referred to in the in the um, yale climate connections article again it's called how climate change is making hurricanes more dangerous. Okay, so extreme rainfall associated with Hurricane Maria over Puerto Rico and its connections to climate variability and change. So this is a paper that was published March 14th, March 4th rather, um, 2019. You know, and there's a lot of these papers have a plain language summary. So they have the abstract, but then they go to plain language, uh, which are generally pre pretty um, easy read. So basically with Hurricane Maria back in 2017, we had record-breaking rainfall over Puerto Rico. This caused unprecedented flooding, landslides across the island, and led to widespread devastation. So this paper looks at the extreme rainfall produced by Hurricane Maria, used 35 historical weather stations, with daily precipitation data from 1956 to 2016. Then they analyzed it to statistic, statistically to determine how unusual Maria's rainfall was, and if Maria's rainfall could be attributed to just variability in the climate or, or, and or to climate change. They found that Hurricane Maria produced the single largest maximum rainfall event since 1956 had the highest precipitation of 129 storms that impacted the island since 1956. So the extreme precipitation, like that of Hurricane Maria, has become much more likely in recent years, and long-term trends in atmospheric and sea surface temperature are both linked to increased precipitation in this particular storm. Okay, and these events are becoming increasingly more likely. Okay, so that's the gist of that study. So we get more extreme rainfall events. 
Okay. Hurricane, in, hurricane intensification. So we start with a tropical disturbance and then um, a tropical storm, you know, going up to hurricanes, you know, and the time that it takes to go from tropical disturbance to, you know, category five hurricane seems to be speeding up, seems to be intensifying. Okay, so these storms are getting str stronger very, very quickly. This is in the central and eastern tropical Atlantic. Okay, so they used uh, here, they looked at the magnitude of rapid intensification, defined as an event where a hurricane increases intensity by 25 knots or higher in 24 hours. I think it said 35 knots was incorrectly in, in, uh, that I discussed in a previous video. Okay, um, so they looked at it over a period of 86 to 2015 when they had good um, satellite coverage, 30-year satellite period. Okay, so they, they found that in the, they found that in the eastern tropical Atlantic and central, there was an increase of 3.8 knots per decade in the intensification. Okay, so the warming, they, 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 their analysis reveals that warming of the upper ocean coinciding with the positive phase of the AMO, uh, Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, warmer ocean temperatures, and associated changes in the large-scale environment has favored the intensification, the rapid intensification of these storms. And this has substantial implications for the eastern Caribbean islands some of which were devastated during the 2017 hurricane season. So we're seeing this exact thing happening, uh, happening now, okay? So that's what that paper is saying. Recent increases in tropical cyclone intensification rates. This is another paper um, that's showing that um, the, the, they're looking at over a period of time, looking at the 24 hour wind speed changes and again, they were finding that there was an intensification. I think if we look here, this is a slope in knots per year of the intensification. So we're seeing, you know, increases globally and in increases in the Atlantic. This is in another part of the Atlantic, I guess. Okay, so basically the, uh, you know, we're seeing an increase, you know, in some regions of the intensification of storms. And observations show this pretty clearly. Okay, Hurricane Harvey links to ocean heat content and climate change adaptation. Okay, uh, the oceans are warming. Higher ocean heat content, sea surface uh, temperatures invigorates tropical cyclones to make them more intense, bigger, longer lasting, and greatly increases the flooding rains and they give the example of Hurricane Harvey, and they talked about, uh, you know, how hurricanes keep tropical oceans cooler as a consequence of their strong winds that increase evaporation, right? When there's evaporation from water, the ocean, then it cools the water that's left behind because the water molecules that are moving faster escape out into the atmosphere. That leaves cooler, mean, speeds of water molecules that are left in the ocean. So, so the evaporation does cool the oceans. Um, and they talk about supercharged hurricanes and how we adapt. How do we get better resilience? Okay, so that was that paper. Um, this is assessing the present and future probability of Hurricane Harvey's rainfall. Okay, and they talked about, so basically, this is where they say that, um, okay, they looked at uh, three climate reanalysis, six climate models. For, for Texas, they estimated that the annual probability of 500 millimeters of area integrated rainfall was about 1% in the period 1981 to 2000 and will increase to 18% over the period 2081 to 2100 under, under the RCP 
8.5 pathway. And if the frequency of events increase linearly between these two periods, then in 2017, the annual probability would be 6%, a six-fold increase since the late 20th century. Okay, in the probability of these uh, heavy rainfall events that Harvey experienced. Um, recent intense hurricane response. So this is talking about how the intensity of um, the proportion of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes has increased at a rate of 25 to 30 percent per degree Celsius of global warming. Okay, and there's been a similar decrease in Category 1 and Category 2s. So although the total number of hurricanes doesn't seem to have changed that much, we're definitely getting a large increase in the stronger ones and a large decrease in the weaker ones. Okay, so that's the whole gist of that paper. Um, now the translation of these speeds, there's a global slowdown of the tropical cyclone translation speed. Okay, so what's happening is that the forward motion of these storms is decreasing. The translation speed is decreasing with warming. And again, this is mostly a jet stream um, phenomena. The jet stream is weakening. The, the temperature difference between the equator and the Arctic is decreasing. So the jet streams are slowing down and becoming much wavier. And that slowing down means that the steering currents for, for these storms is slowing down. So um, tropical cyclone translation speed has decreased globally by 10% over the period 1949 to 2016, which is very likely to have compounded and possibly dominated any increases in local rainfall totals that may have occurred as a result of increased tropical cyclone rain rate. So the storms are stronger, right? There's more water vapor in them. The rainfall is heavier but also because the translation speed of the storm is much slower, the water is being dumped over more um, concentrated areas. So this is why all these factors combine to um, make rainfall much stronger. The slowdown is actually globally, it's 10%, okay? The tropical cyclone translation speed or motion of, forward motion of the storm has decreased globally by 10% over this period, but it's been 21% and 16% over land areas affected by Western North Pacific and North Atlantic tropical cyclones respectively. Okay, so in other words, in the North Atlantic over, over land areas, the, the speed of the storms has slowed down 16%. Um, is, that number is 22% in Australia. Okay, so we saw tremendous rainfall from Harvey exactly as a result of this. Hurricane stalling along the North, uh, North American coast and implications for rainfall. Okay, this is specifically again on the guiding of these storms from the jet streams and the stalling out. Okay, uh, similar to the last paper. Um, this is a model of the RCP 4.5 scenario and it shows that it, the intensity of tropical storms will greatly increase um, over, over time. So much, many, many more category four, category five storms and fewer category one, category two storms. So that backs up a previous study. Um, tropical cyclone intensity and intensification. So rapid intensification, another paper on that. Physically based assessment of hurricane surge threats. Okay, storm surges. So we just experienced a 24 foot storm surge, you know, the category five Dorian over, over uh, Grand Bahama Island. And this storm surge covered, you know, lots of the islands and, uh, you know, it talks about the return periods of the storm surges, New York City storm surge, etc. cetera. Um, storms, the poleward migration of the location of tropical cyclone maximum intensity. Okay, so over time, the maximum intensity of storms is moving to higher and higher latitudes. That's what this study is showing, okay? And this is the, uh, you know, there's some data showing that. Um, and past and future hurricane intensity changes along the U.S. East Coast. Okay, so we have loads of information, loads of science showing that hurricanes are getting worse because of climate change. Thanks.